Hi, I'm going to show you how to manage complex jobs on Bianca, our HPC cluster at Upmax, as part of the intermediate workshop uh, on Bianca we teach at Upmax. And what we'll be doing is we're going to practice using the Upmax documentation on how to do this. Um, there's also a bit of Slurm documentation that we look at. And we're going to write a minimal workflow that of jobs that depend on another using slums. Um, also we're going to write a script that allows you to do the same but f from in a script. And also um, this will only be discussed. I'm going to talk about some workflow managers um, that exactly uh, simplify your life beyond slurm. So the idea of we're being able to work with complex jobs is it will reduce the time you need to check on jobs to finish and I'll give you the use case below and it allows you to reduce you having to manually start jobs as part of a more complex workflow you can just get it started and one day it will be done and then you'll know so here we have an, a very s the, the most simple workflow possible that I could imagine uh, it's an it's a workflow that takes three steps there's three bash scripts uh, do a do b and do c and you can submit them using as batch but a and b both need to have run before doing do c they can perfect perfectly well run at the same time on different nodes for example and you want that maybe both steps take for example imagine both each step taking 10 days you can do them at the same time um, you could do it like this you could do s batch do a you do s batch do b like probably have to add uh, some information about yourself with the dash a and your account number but let's assume these scripts are complete then you can submit them like that and then you have to wait and you'll be checking in regularly if they're both done and only when both jobs are done you do s batch do c uh, so this waiting step in the middle that is what we're going to uh, take care of we're going to avoid this so just to give you an idea what the scripts are so here we see all three very simple scripts on screen so do a is a bash script that writes 42 to uh, some kind of uh, some kind of simulation result some kind of measurement to a file called a.txt b does something similar and writes to b.txt this means write to a file um, and what c does it writes a.txt to c and it appends b.txt to c so it merges the results Alright, in practice, these are more advanced, of course, but the the part of this ex the goal of this exercise is that you can that you learn how to do complex jobs, not um, using actually complex jobs, because then we have to wait too long. Like these steps, they are quite easy to copy paste and to redo. So there are multiple ways to run complex jobs. One is to use Slurm. Um, and you can do this on the command line or from bash scripts um, slurm is helpful to an extent that what well, it assumes it's it's there um, but it doesn't fine-tune your your jobs for you there are um, and it only allows for like you can do any structure you want but it doesn't help solve very complex job structures uh, so my project, the, the example here is quite simple. Sure, you can do that in Slurm, but if it gets bigger and bigger, then saying what depends on what gets very cumbersome in Slurm. Sure, you can do it, but then there are better workflow managers that help you out. And I'll discuss them, but there are no exercises on it. So first we're going to do complex jobs in Slurm from the command line, and then we're going to do the same from a script, because then you have an idea how it looks like. So, in the general workflow, we submit uh, do A uh, with S batch, and then we submit do B with S batch. Um, I add dash A staff, which is the project number. You have to fill in your project number uh, to get it running, because that's where your computational use will be will be written down and and tracked. And 
always when you submit a job like that, you get a job ID. This is this number, I simplified the numbers quite a bit. Uh, so it's 5 million and 5 million and 1. And then you can submit a job called do C using dash dash dependency is after OK colon job number 1 colon job number two where you put a comma here that there's a more advanced syntax here I'll show you in the documentation of slurm what all your options are here so I'm going to look for the word dependency because then it will be there and here we have this section about dependencies and um, so defer to the job the dependency like after OK is one thing it means that all the jobs have finished but you can also do after any which means if one if the jobs all have finished with correctly or with an error so after any means well just run it when everything is done and there are some more options after uh, like after for anything so there are some options you can read them yourself I'm not going to use them in this exercise so I won't but here you see the documentation on this all right, back to the exercise. So, so we can type this all in manually, but we can also do this from a script. This script does exactly the same thing that we did uh, manually. It does submit the job do A and it submits the job do B. But what it does from that, uh, it does some extra steps. So it runs this job, let's take job A, and job A gives you this text submit a job with ID 5 million then it uses the pipe to to send that output to a tool called cut and cut allows you to cut text into pieces um, and if we use a delimiter that's what the D means of a space then suddenly we separate per word um, and we take uh, the fourth word the fourth field it's called uh, and then we have one two three well and then then we have this idea ah because it starts counting at zero zero one two three four so it takes the fifth one in practice uh, if you count like a human do um, that whole thing the output so here we have the cutout word is stored as a variable variable called job id a and the same for job id b and then we need to fill in those variables uh, in our dependency part so here we write do as batch on your account where your dependency is after ok of which two jobs well one is job a comma and the other is job b like this dollar and the uh, curly braces indicate fill in the variable here and then do c so in that way, uh, you do the same thing from a script. So you can set the, the, this up once and then profit all the time. So up until now, we have spoken about Slurm, but there are more complex things called workflow managers. And I'll be going shortly through them. So I've listed the three, in my opinion, most important. We can uh, disagree on this. Um, uh, the tools I'll be discussing are Make, snake make and next flow and we start with the first one I call it we, we take GNU make uh, this is like the what the oldest tools around it's widely used maybe you have not used it but a lot of tools exist that use make uh, behind the scenes um, the hardest the weirdest thing about it is that you have to must use tabs for indentation not spaces it must be tabs it has a file driven approach but it is not aware of being on an HPC cluster the other extreme is Nextflow which is written with HPCs in mind it uses a data driven approach so it um, like processes can talk with each other and my favorite thing is that it has peer reviewed pipelines so if you do something that's complex and you want to share it or you want to do something that's complex that's already been done you can use peer-reviewed pipelines written by them um, and profit.
Snake Make is a bit in between. It is a version. Uh, it is a, ver a variant on Make. Uh, it has Python-like syntax. It also uses a data-driven approach, so not not purely files. Uh, and it is HPC friendly since a newer uh, iteration. Um, so how does GNU Make look like? Well, this is how a script of GNU Make looks like. Um, and maybe you have seen these scripts one day. Um, it says, well, to create a file called c.txt, I need to have these two files present. And if these two files are present, it will run that script. Um, the, uh, but the, t but the a dot text is not present at the start, so the make file has another line which is to get a dot text, we need nothing, and if we have that, which is we can always do this, we can call the script do a, and this will create a dot text, and for b the same thing, so it can run these two things uh, simultaneously. Here's how to run such a script. Uh, you can just put make dash j, which means run simultaneous jobs in a bash script, and it can submit it to the job scheduler as usual. Snake make, I'm going to skip it because it's in between make uh, snake make and uh, in between GNU make and next flow. Um, next flow is very powerful, uh, but you'll see if I take a look at the script, the same script does exactly the same. Is it's quite long, huh? so here we have uh, process do A, we have process do B, we have process do C. So this is apparently a very um, very complex process, and here we have the workflow. It's like wh where the script starts, and this is because um, we didn't fit the next flow idea of how you should set up analysis well. Um, it allows so so the scripts that I've supplied at the top of this page, they create files and they don't have any input arguments or any output arguments. They create a file and the, so the scripts, they create a file and Nextflow puts those files in some place and needs to copy it around everywhere. And this is because to guarantee things being safe, it's very powerful, but in this case, we didn't fit well with the idea of a Nextflow script. One of my favorite things about Nextflow is you can go to Sakara Ask AI. Sakara is a, the co a company that uses Nextflow a lot. And you can ask, go to Ask AI and register there, and you can ask an AI to write this script. I've done that. This is how I got this script. It took me about 40 minutes of dialogue and testing to make sure it worked exactly as it as I wanted, but I did not s type a single line of this code. Um, yeah, and Nextflow, it's installed on the computer cluster, uh, on Bianca has Nextflow installed. Now it's time to go to the exercise, I'll be using regular slurms, uh, regular slurm, um, because for GNU make there are no courses, but for uh, snake make there are courses available, for Nextflow there are courses available, so take a look out, so look out for that if you want to know more about these, if your workflow gets too complex to handle, we are going to do simple f simpler things today. So I'm going to do this procedure by hand, so I'm going to move this to the right side of the screen, uh, because at the left I'll be having Bianca. Let's see, yeah, I'm on Bianca, I'm in the project of the course, and um, we need to collect the scripts and get them on Bianca. Well, I put this in a, in a folder, I will call it a complex jobs, just to put them somewhere, complex jobs, cd complex jobs, and now I'm in the folder complex jobs. And I need to collect these scripts, well I put them all in different tabs, so they now they download, That I, I don't want that. Um, I just scroll up and copy paste them here. Here we have A, there copy paste, nano, alright, and you do there. There, Control C to copy, nano A dot sh, uh, paste, save, exit, make it executable to A, ch mod. Ah, well sure, it has to be called do A, yeah, sure, 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 do A, ch mod plus X do A. 
I'm going to keep copy, do A to do B and do C as well, just that I have the files already. Um, do B, let's get that modified. This uses 3.314 to B. There. Save. Exit there. And C, I'll copy paste that one. There. Copy. Nano do C and remove all this and paste and save and close. So I have now three files. Um, I should I'll make sure that they are executable again. I can now help A, B, and C. And now I can run these files. You can't see it here with colors, uh, but if you set up your terminal correctly, you can see colors now. All right, back to the exercise. So I have three jobs. I'm going to use slurm um, on the job scheduler. So submit to A and do B to the job scheduler. Well, let's add batch. Do A dot sure. There has to be an account. So I use staff, but you can also use the project of this course. Um, I'll just use it because um, I'll just I'll use that account. Project number. Let's take a look what this number is and I'll try it out myself here. S batch dash A there. So now I've submitted my job to A to the queue. I do the same for job B. So I've done this. And now we need to submit to C to the job scheduler with the dependency that runs after the web app. Yeah, so we go up and we're going to take a look how we did it. There it is. Um, this is not the correct syntax. Do C should always be at the end. So I'm going to copy paste it and modify it. Uh, and of course you have to change the numbers. So I'm just going to write it out. S batch um, dash a project code sense. I'm just going to scroll up there. Dash dash dependency is after OK colon 379 comma 300 space do C and now I have submitted a job that is dependent so we can already see this if we take a look at the job queue with SQ SQ dash dash me you see your own jobs and we see that do C has a dependency um, so the other two are, are, are still waiting to be running. We don't need to wait for it. We already done it. Next exercise is I'm going to put, uh, put the terminal back to the left again. There we go. And let's go to exercise two. Is where we're going to run this from a script. So we've just typed this in by hand. We're going to write a script that does exactly the same thing. We call the script do all. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to just uh, copy paste the script. So I'm going to nano do all there. Like uh, I have written the script do all, so I've already done it. Uh, there we have the script do all. Control C, Control Shift V. And let's take a look if it looks correct. Yeah, this looks, I, it uses staff, so I should call, turn this to. Um, the pro I'm your staff here. I'll probably also don't need to. That is all nice for me. Um, save, exit there. Um, I'm going to make sure that do all is executable. Um, but I've created it. Do all. Let's take a look how it looks like. Yeah, this looks perfect. What do we need to do more now? Must the script do all be submitted using as batch or can it be run directly and why? So taking a look at this script, we see that it does nothing hard. It submits a job, it gets the fourth worth, fifth worth of it and, and, and schedules the dependency. So this is exactly the same we can type on the terminal. This is not tough, we can just run it like this, do all and there. Uh, and it's running. Well, in this case, I see that the dash A uh, doesn't work using staff. So I'm going to copy paste this word. I'm going to fix it there. Nano do all. 
and instead of staff I'm gonna use the project code there 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 save exit and now running to all and there taking a look at the, at the job queue again we see that there are there's not these are now added to there's another there's one job with the dependency here and there's one job with the dependency there so this is what I've just added uh, this is what the script added these three jobs are probably what the script added yeah do a do b do c so that means I've now written a script that works that can do job run jobs with dependencies from a script um, yeah you can use these you can try this out using nextflow or snake make or gnu make but we're not going to talk about this um, instead I'm going to round off this session we have now learned how to write jobs that depend on each other using slurm um, either from a terminal or using a bash script with that I wish you a very good day bye